So after we go through that, we say, okay, I need diversification. So that's how we start and happen at that time because my children, yeah, I want to study Mandarin because I'm, I have no channel education. So I move my children, start my eldest son, Imelda, second children and so on to Singapore. They study ACS and RGS. And after that, I, I moved. Whole family happened very lucky in 1997. We moved to because one day my wife we walking in the botanic garden. So my wife asking, you know, this four children, two there, two there. How do you manage? You know, since since your parents live in Singapore, we also know Singapore very well. Why not move the whole family here? And then you know, over we end or whatever, you still can go to Indonesia. I said, okay, good idea. So that's why we moved to Singapore early in 97. And late 97, there's a crisis come. In the sense, lucky. But I want, first, is I want my children have better education in uh, uh, Singapore because at that time, in Jakarta, there's no chance for Chinese education, Mandarin education. And then the English also not so good. Now, it's much better, but at that time, it's not. I think I know you've been in and out. You know, you bring Chinese magazine to Jakarta, it's prohibited. Huh? Sometimes they can charge you. Yeah, okay, that's how the issue there. Then I moved to Singapore, so overcome this crisis, take about three, four years, overcome it. So I said, okay, I need diversify. So when you see diversify, first thing you go, where's the next market? China. So at that time, in year 2001, the China have very important decision. The Chinese finally Get, got into WTO. If you still remember, textile industry, China is good competitive. When they export, they always get quota. Quota everywhere. Everybody put it But as soon as they go WTO, there's no quota. So I foresee, my God, this is a huge opportunity. Then I know Fiscos Rayon, where I will study, it came out from a wood. So, I do two investments. One, I acquire upstream. Actually, I acquire upstream. I want to acquire technology in Brazil because there's a three factory in the world at that time. One of this one in Brazil happened in financial difficulty for sales. It's $120 million. So, I bought over this and then I also built up fixed cost plant in China. So to connect, then by learning the technology, so I can more integrated, more uh, uh, strong. And then at the same time, we also expand our palm oil. We are all the time is upstream uh, to go expansion our refinery. That's how the three main business to grow. And then today in the fish, in the special, there's a two product. One is specialty pub for. Uh, uh, dry food and so on. The other one is uh, uh, for fiscal rayon. Fiscal rayon for processing plant, we are now the largest in China. We are third largest in the world. But sooner or later, we probably likely going to be second or third largest in the world. But I'm not looking for largest. I say we want to have the best quality branding. I do not understand branding. So I say we should learn something. If some of you want to apply the job for branding, most welcome. <laughs> I'm looking for someone because I don't know. Yeah. And then uh, and then on the special part, we are second largest. Uh, on the segment of fiscals, second largest after South Africa. On the special part, we are second largest after another American company, Rione. So that's how this business we are in. And then somewhere in the middle of 2000, this, this century. So I have idea when I see China, I come to conclusion before all this big news about pollution and so on, in 2003 and four, when I talk to Chinese, China, because my come conclusion, China cannot forever burn coal to produce electricity. Because I connect to my earlier my earlier business career when I contracted with Petermina, 
they start to sell LNG to Japan. Tokyo during 60, early 70, as bad, as bad as China, but not, but not worse. But China is worse today. So the, how I learned, I asked questions in Japanese. Why you want buy LNG? Why not buy oil? Why not buy coal cheaper? They said, oh, no, no, no. I buy LNG because if we all, same price as oil, we buy LNG. Because cleaner fuel, and then you see all the pollution. At that time, it was Tokyo, you know, it's a, a layer of yellowies and so on. So I said, China eventually need to do. So when I start to pick up the region, I think Shanghai and nearby Jiangsu is the best place to start with. That's how I start this LNG terminal. Yeah, and then that's to cut sort of, sort of at, at the end because of uh, the thing of strategic project and so on. They asked us to join venture with Petro China. At the beginning, it's my 100% on my project. Yeah. And then later on, we go to use the LNG gas fire power station. This is all the two today are still running. And then I will always keep on looking for where is the upstream. Because my business model always integrated, upstream to value added. Where where do you get raw material? Then about three, four, four, four years ago, cell gas boom in North America. Uh, you find out cell gas is one of the most competitive gas available in the world. Right? Like now Henry Hub is about three some dollar. You go to MBP in UK, it's about seven or eight dollars. Even you go to uh, Asia, also seven or eight dollars. So before that, a year ago, say a year, a year ago, LNG selling at fourteen fifteen, and they have four dollars. So that is a big opportunity arbitrage. Work. Right now they go down. So but eventually the oil and gas price some year down the road, they had to back to eighty and so on but probably stay with $70, $80 for, for some, some time.